All right, so in this video we're looking about um, kind of how to find n or how many terms in a given sequence if you've been given a sum. So basically they're saying if I add up a certain number of terms I get this number. How many terms did I add up? So in the first example um, we're looking at a sequence here. And again right now you can assume that it's an arithmetic sequence because that's what we're learning about but you might want to double check that. So if I look at these they all go up by plus six and that's the same for everything, so it's going to be an arithmetic sequence. And they're telling me that the sum of a certain number of terms is equal to 572, so that's telling me that S is equal to 572. I know from looking at the pattern that my D is going to be plus 6, so that's the difference between them, and my first term is going to be 8. So A is equal to 8. Now we have our sum formula, and we now know what it's supposed to be equal to, a sum number. We know A and we know D, so we're going to plug it in. So just so you see this, you don't have to write out the formula yourself, but I'm going to. Don't forget that time sign, it's really important to get your calculator to do it correctly. So the sum, we actually know that that is 572, so I'm going to say 572. It's not S 572, it's saying my sum, the total number, is going to be 572, so that's what it's equal to. N, I still don't know, times 2 times A, which is 8, plus N minus 1 times D, which is 6. Now, from here there's two methods that you can go about solving these. Um, one's guaranteed to give you all the right answers that you need, um, the other one you've got to be able to fiddly with your calculator and if you're not confident with that you might not be able to get to the full solution that you need but it's always worth it to give a go if you're not sure and that's the best you can do on the exam so I'll start with the basics um, which is basically go straight to solver now and plug this in just as you see it in the solver so let's take a look at doing that um, Oh, looks like I need to restart that. Okay, so going into Solver. So again, here you've got a couple op options. Um, then you want to use Solver in this case to give a try if you're not sure about the more complex method I'll go over next. But Solver is what you're mostly using um, and intuitive with. So we're going to plug in exactly what we see. 572 is equal to something you don't know divided by 2 times bracket 2 times the first term, which is 8 plus bracket x minus 1 bracket times the difference, which is a positive 6. Enter. And I'm going to go ahead and press solve, and I see that I've got um, x is equal to 13. So that's telling me here that from solver, n is equal to 13. So 13 terms are being added. Kay. Now where this gets fiddly is that sometimes you get uh, a negative answer for x. And that's a bit strange um, because we shouldn't have negative terms. Remember if you're thinking about term numbers or in what you're looking for, it's things like the first term or the second term or the third term or the fourth term. It's counting numbers and they're always positive. So if you get a negative answer, it doesn't really make sense. So I'm going to um, just kind of explain a little bit about what I say. Uh, unfortunately my calculator simulation online doesn't let me show you how exactly it works out on your real calculator, but you'll get the idea. So if x comes up as a negative number, the first thing that we've done here is actually solved it per normal. We've just opened it up and used it without changing anything. But the lower limit, if I press repeat here, that lower limit is telling me I want you to search from like a really, really, really small negative number, like way, 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 way negative number, all the way through to a giant positive number and everything in between. And the calculator will go looking for the solution between those. And it will come up with just the first one it comes to. But these equations, because they're quadratic, there's two, z two ins inside of them you're looking for, there will always be two solutions. So if it comes across the negative solution first, it stops there and gives you the negative one, even though what you really need is a positive solution, the next solution along. So one way to work around that, if you're going to use your calculator fidgety, um, is change the lower limit. So what I mean is actually go back by hitting repeat like we just did, 
go down to the lower limit and make it zero and then press enter. Now if you hit solve on your calculator it should go through and solve it. Mine's a bit fussy, um, the online version, so it's not really doing it in the same way. But it should search through and find the next positive solution for you. So that's one way to deal with it. Um, so if one of your solutions is negative, you need to ignore it. If one is, if it's positive one, use it. Um, and if there's two solutions, it can sometimes be both answers because if it's a decreasing sequence, sometimes you can have the sum more than once because you're adding up a bunch of terms and then they become negative, you start taking them away. Um, so it does get a bit fussy, uh, but that's a couple of ways to play with it. Another thing you can do if you're looking for another solution is change your lower limit to what you just got for your answer and maybe a little bit bigger, so like 13.1 and search and it might go find another solution for you. Again, you should just be able to press solve, but um, this isn't role modeling exactly how it'll work on your calculator. So in a pinch, if you're not sure in the exam, um, most of you are pretty good about identifying the terms and plugging it in and seeing that you have some unknown, so put it in a solver. It's likely you'll get a positive answer, but if you don't, if you get a negative, Again, hit repeat and change that lower limit to zero. Now, I'm going to role model um, through the rest of this another way to use your, um, to solve this, which takes a little bit more mathematics. And those of you who are a bit nervous about algebra and simplifying things might not like this. But um, I think a lot of you will be able to do it, and it will definitely give you both the solutions that you need. And it will help you solve the excellence level problems as well. So if I look at this from another point of view, so again, if you're stuck in a pinch, you can just put that in and use Solver, and you're more than likely going to get the right thing and play with it. And you guys have lots of time to practice in class, so be sure to ask me questions. But the more exact method here, 2 times 8 plus n minus 1 times 6, is let's learn how to simplify this and plug it into our polynomial solver in our calculator, because it will actually give you both of the solutions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 5, 7, 2, leave it exactly where it is, and then I'm going to simplify what's inside of this, um, inside of these brackets here. So I have n over 2 times, 2 times 8 is 16, plus n minus 1, I guess I can do this in one step. So first thing I've done is 2 times 8 is 16. Next thing I'm going to do is going to expand this out. Remember with brackets you can expand by timesing the thing on the outside to both the things in the middle. So if I times that 6 through, I'm going to get 6 in minus 6 bracket. So again, I've taken the d, the 6, and times it to the negative 1, and times it to this in, and that's going to give me 6 in minus 6. Next thing I'm going to do is look at factoring um, or simplifying the numbers inside. So 16 and negative 6, these are like terms, so I can combine them together. What's 16 minus 6? That's going to be 10. So I'm going to rewrite this as 10 plus 6n times n over 2 is equal to 572. And the last thing I want to do is try to expand all this through. So um, I can think about just the n times by 10. Expand it through. I'm going to times to both sides. So n times 10 is going to be just 10n. But if you think about that divided by 2 there, you could also think about expanding that too. So that's um, n over 2 times 10, and that becomes 10 over 2, so you basically end up doing some dividing there. You get 5n, because 10 divided by 2 gives you 5. So that 2 in front is going to divide both these numbers by 2. So divide by 2, divide by 2. So 10 divided by 2 becomes 5, and you've got 5n take that whole thing and times it by the 6n, 6 divided by 2 gives you 3, and n times n in this case gives you n squared. And you've got 572. The next thing that we need to do here is rearrange it for 0. So set equal to 0. So I've got one thing on this side, I'm going to try to move it to the opposite side of the equation. That's a positive 572, so I'm going to go minus 572 on this side, and minus 572 to the other side. Those will cancel, it leaves me with 0. Negative 572 plus 5n plus 3n squared. So 
this is obviously a bit more complex for some of you, but again, um, if you're really wanting to make sure you have a solid understanding and can find all the solutions, this might be a good thing to learn to do. But, and again, the other way will work in a pinch, so feel free to turn off the video if it's too much for you. Um, I'm going to go into polynomial, F2, and I'm going to say that it's a two-degree polynomial. And now I need to plug it in in the order that I see. But I have to plug it in with the squared term first, then the x term, and then the c term. So if I think about that, this is the first term I have to plug in. So I'm going to plug in the 3, because it's with the n squared, and I need the 3, the squared term first. Because you see here it's looking for a squared, or a x squared, so a first is the one that goes with the squared letter, so that's 3. Then I'm looking for b, and it's just with the single, just with the x, or in our case the n, that's a 5. I'll put in a 5. And c, that's just the number with no letters attached to it, and here I see that's a negative 572, so negative 572. Enter. And, sorry, enter there. And here it's showing me my two solutions. So like I said, I'll have two solutions for x. Sometimes they're both positive, sometimes there'll be one positive, one negative. In this case, a solution of negative 14 uh, 0.66 makes no sense. I wouldn't have a negative 14th term, so I ignore it. And my answer, like we found above, is still n equals 13. But in some cases, you'll actually have two positive solutions, and that's one way that you'll definitely be able to see them both. So again, you can get fidgety and play with the limits on your calculator and get good at being able to find all the solutions using that if you don't like rearranging, like I've done here. But um, if you want to learn how to do the rearranging and making sure that you're plugging it in okay, uh, you'll end up being able to see all the solutions every time. So just to recap on that, how I plug it in again, the number with the n squared goes in first because it's asking for a x squared. Then I've got b x, so I need to use the 5 n. And then I got just the number at the back, c negative 572. So watch out for any positive or negative signs and get those in there correctly. After that, it should give you both your solutions. So again, like I've said here, if one of them is negative, ignore it. Um, use the positive one, but if they're both positive, the answer is going to happen for you in two different situations, so they're both correct. So give a go um, with some practice on these and see how you guys go. Most of you are already doing this, but you're just able to see a little bit more um, in depth about how you can go about solving this in another way.